Happy Summer Ween from beautiful Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is the perfect setting to kick off the Summer Ween Readathon, an event that's all about celebrating the start of the Halloween season. Tucked between the border of California and Nevada, I've been visiting this mountainous oasis with my family since I was a little girl. My time in Tahoe with my family created such a spooky summer atmosphere and I just had so much fun with all the gorgeous views of the lake and floating and just hanging out, spending afternoons by the water, like it was just oh, so much fun. Funnily enough though, our family's Airbnb was situated right across the street from Tahoe's only historic cemetery. Like seriously, what are the chances? On a completely different note, my Prosecco popsicles were a huge hit with the family and I can't recommend them enough for summer when it's really hot. All you need is Prosecco, obviously a fruit-based popsicle, which we had raspberry flavored ones, some fruit, and a little bit of edible glitter if you're feeling fancy. In between playing board games and bartender during the first two days of Summerween, I was able to start reading two fiction books. I started the audiobook for Hunted by Darcy Coates, which follows the investigation and rescue mission into the disappearance of a young woman who vanished while hiking solo in a national forest. And I am very excited to report that I've finally gotten to The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren. This vacation horror novel follows the survival journey of a group of young travelers to Thailand trying to have some fun. They find themselves on the world's scariest and deadliest deserted island. So come along with me as I try to create that special Halloween magic in July. I am having the world's laziest Sunday and I'm loving every single minute of it. I had a blast in Tahoe with my family. It's always really fun when we have an opportunity to go back to our childhood vacation spot. But you know, I could be with all my favorite people and still feel exhausted after. I feel so much more alive today having come back yesterday uh, around like a later afternoon and immediately I started unpacking. That's never me. Let me know if you're somebody who likes to delay you're unpacking when you come back for a trip, if you're immediately just like, yep, let's get this suitcase open, let's get these things in the laundry, let's put everything away. I'm typically not that person. Usually it does take me some time to actually muster up the energy to like unpack all my shit. But I think I was highly motivated to get some reading in, doing a little bit of, you know, just like self care, being more internal and focusing on listening to an audiobook, just kind of like mentally checking out, escaping for a little bit. I find it really rejuvenating just to kind of do my own thing for a little bit and my partner's the same so um, we kind of have been doing our own thing he's been gaming this morning after we came back from brunch so we're just we're loving doing our little hobby life and I just had my um, airpods in the entire time I was listening to hunted by Darcy Coates and I finished it so quickly at two times speed it was only really like four-ish hours, maybe five. I was living for this book up until that first reveal. And I was just like, no, I hate when that happens in books where it's set up to be one thing and then it turns out to be something else. I'm not gonna spoil anything. If you've read this book, you know, if you want me just to tell you in the comments, I'll be happy <laughs> to do that. It was really giving me all the creature feature action, like horror vibes I really wanted, you know, that spooky forest setting. And yeah, it just, just what a bummer, truly what a bummer. But the second reveal, I didn't see coming. A lot of the stuff that was coming before it was predictable, but I was, I was happy. I was, you know, really enjoying the atmosphere because Darcy Coates does phenomenal atmosphere. I just really wanted the plot to go in a different direction than it did. Anywho, I'm about 25% into The Forgotten Island by David Sodergren. I am loving that one. Like it could totally be a five star. They've just gotten to the point where they're probably I'm gonna be making their way to this isolated island very soon. I think a big reason why I'm enjoying this book, and there are many from the writing being really great, the characters having such distinctive personalities, just really interesting dynamics. But like the major thing I think that makes me really enjoy this book is that I can see so much of myself in the first section of this book. Like they are in Southeast Asia, specifically Thailand. 
and it's just this stereotypical trip that so many Americans make when they go abroad for the very first time. You know, most of the time it's after they graduated college and, you know, they're trying on different identities, exploring who they are. And it definitely does come at a cost to the locals in this area where, you know, these Westerners, not just people from the United States, go to these countries and they're just exotifying people or they're coming in with like, you know, these mindsets that are very patronizing towards the locals, putting your own kind of um, worldview on other cultures. You know, culture appropriation, you know, it's just the stereotypical trip. I've, I went to India, I went to Cambodia right after college. And although I think I was more like on the critical side of things, you know, it didn't exempt me from doing some, you know, silly, you know, tourist things. For example, doing things that definitely put my safety in jeopardy, thinking somehow I'm like bulletproof. That is definitely not the case anywhere you go. And our characters are definitely those who have of their own will brought themselves into a very sticky situation. So I think it's funny how this author portrays a lot of Westerners who travel to Southeast Asia so accurately, almost as kind of like this cautionary tale of what like, you know, the worst case scenario is for foreigners who come in treating these countries as playgrounds. So we'll wait and see how things unfold. Hopefully there's, you know, something that I enjoy and kind of am expecting a little bit, going in with a little bit of expectation, obviously. Want something to be met there. It's the third day of the readathon and I've only finished one book, which isn't a big deal. Um, I'm, I'm more concerned about really enjoying my books and finding things that really capture that like spooky summerween spirit. Today's main goal is just to like kind of relax, chill out. I'm definitely going to be staying home for sure. I did have plans to check out all of the Halloween displays at at home today. That's always a funny way <laughs> at at home. And I just decided, you know what, I just want to kind of, you know, hang out and veg at home. So tomorrow, bright and early, I will be going to my at home and seeing if they have more Halloween out there. My goodness, it is so bright and it's not even 10 a.m. yet. This morning, I am making my way to at home because I've only gone one time where they actually had displays of Halloween. Right before I went to Tahoe, I checked out at home. I just had an inkling because, you know, it was right before July 4th weekend and I just, I knew. At that point, it's been several weeks that other parts of the country had Halloween out at their at home stores. Mine had to have at least something and they did. I saw a lot of really cool things, but you know, me, I'm, I'm pretty picky, but I saw a lot of really cute things and I only went home with two things. And it's after July 4th, there should be way more stuff out there. There are specific things I really want from at home that I've been seeing people post online. They have everything listed on their website, but only a few things you could actually purchase right now. So I kind of want to get a lot of these things in stores because some of them are kind of large. For example, I really want to get the little candy corn stacked display. There's like three or four candy corns on top of each other. And as I mentioned in a recent vlog, candy corns are some of my favorite Halloween motifs. Motifs. There's also a few things from the Southern Gothic line I'm really intrigued by, like that one bust of a woman who looks like she kind of has like a part of her jaw missing. And then after that, I thought I'd hit up TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, whatever. They're like literally the same things in my local area. There's one that's like really close by me. So hopefully I have some time to get to that. I feel like I woke up earlier than I actually did today only because I didn't get a good night's sleep at all, but it's summer. That's kind of the vibe. Ooh, we have traffic, fun. Uh, what else is new in my city? But um, yeah, last night I had basically like a little slumber party with Deja from Deja's Book World. So we are co-hosting the Tara Readathon together for Team Cups. Love for the Team Cups, um, even though we're kind of <laughs> on the lower end of, you know, this competition right now, but you know, it's the beginning of the month. We're prioritizing self-care to then come out on top at the end of July. Uh, but she was hosting sprints and I hung out basically with her for like nine hours, but um, she's just so much fun. She's, yeah, she's just the best person ever. 
immediately after we got off sprints because it was like 2 a.m her time i finished up the forgotten island which wow let me tell you that book david sodergrand you've easily become one of my favorite authors real quick because i love the horror by him and i just find so much joy because i'm also a huge pug lover and his handle on instagram is books and pugs i think so he always has like easter eggs of pugs in his book and it's fun trying to find them it's just a funny little thing okay i just parked at at home because traffic was um wild and i obviously didn't want to crash but the forgotten island i did not know where that book was going to go on the outset it's definitely in the realm of cosmic horror it goes far beyond the scope of like just a creature feature but that is a prominent part of it as well there's other aspects too that i won't spoil or say anything about i loved it i've been really searching for that summerween feeling it there's just a certain kind of like like atmosphere and emotion that when I think back to previous summer weens, I just feel like there's that that feeling and I want to really capture that. I want to embody that. Something that I feel like this book got me closer to doing, plus that whole like sleepover situation with Deja where we're on reading sprints until like 11 p.m. my time, like 2 a.m. hers. I just feel like I'm getting there. I'm getting to that like kind of safe you know escapist kind of feeling where for me you know i'm not working during the summer as like a teacher and i can stay up late i can just you know focus on prioritizing reading it, it feels so like nourishing and lovely to just kind of focus on having fun because that is so not what gets prioritized in our daily lives as adults so i have a five star in this reading vlog yay okay so let's go to at home because i'm like chomping at the bit i'm hoping since it's been a week since i last visited that they have way more hours out. So let's go inside and see. I am so depressed right now. It's okay. I'm not really because there's like a million other things that I'm more concerned about in the world, but like how it's been like a week since I last been at home and they only have like three new things out. I'm literally shocked because the entirety of continental United States has all their at home stuff out except mine. I'm so confused. I do not know what's going on in my area. I don't know if they're really struggling to sell their like 4th of July summer stuff because they are all on that wall. Like they need to really blow that stuff out with like an 80% off summer sale because whew, there is way too much American flag flamingo stuff going on at my at home for being after July 4th. There should be like literally Halloween everywhere because I'm pretty sure it was last year. I don't know. Okay, whatever. But um, there were some things that tempted me there. Like there was this urn that was just all black, no designs, no details, nothing. It was pretty significant. I didn't even catch the price on it. Um, I was kind of tempted to get it. I like it because it seems, you know, something that would be on display in the Disney's Haunted Mansion ride. And uh, I was tempted, but I'm like, you know what? I don't necessarily like you know, love it. It's not giving me that like kind of sparkly tingly feeling that I talk about. And there was another thing I was tempted to get, which was that like mini version of that very iconic wraith, um, kind of, it's big. It's like a wall thing, I think. Um, or maybe it stands up. I'm not too sure, but it's the one from Cracker Barrel that everybody loves. It's like that Holy Grail item or whatever. I've never really been into it, but in a smaller version, I was like, oh, this is cute, but not for $25. So I'm like, mm, if it's around during the Clarence side of Halloween, which feels like a million years from now, but also like tomorrow because life flies by, I might get it. I might grab it that at that like price point but uh, yeah I'm not like super in love with it and it's not even like I'm trying to save money which is obviously an important thing to do your girl's planning a wedding right now it's just like I don't want to have things around that I'm not in love with and I want to be excited and that's like literally the whole point of me decorating my home depressed okay because I remember having such a great time this time last year in my summer ween vlog at, at home I was kissing little pumpkins and having the time of my life but maybe that was only because I saw my first code orange there and that was like exciting but um okay I've been seeing things at some of my local TJ Maxx stores home goods all that so maybe you know I'll I'll make it worth me getting ready to go out into the world <laughs> So I think maybe I'll hit up some TJ Maxx, Home Goods, those kind of things. Let me know if you even have an at-home store in your location. I looked them up on the map and they don't have too many in my state, which is California. The closest one is like two hours away from here. The hunt continues. 
I'm back home now. I had some lunch because I was dying once noon started rolling around. Luckily, there were some Halloween things in the stores I went to after I left at home. I went to a few TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshall stores and picked up a few things. I think I got one, two, three, four things, which is kind of surprising considering it is, I don't even know what day it is. What day is it? It's July 8th. On the first trip I ever went to at home this season, I picked up two little gargoyles. I love these so much. I have another one right here. I hadn't seen these online on their website, on social media at all. So when I saw them, I immediately had to have these because they fit so perfectly with my gothic vibe that I'm trying to go and accumulate things for. It just looks like something that I would for sure see on the Disney Haunted Mansion ride. It's just, it's right there. I had to have these. I think they're only about like, yeah, $9.99. And I wanted two because maybe I want something that's more like symmetrical. Um, I could always place them in two different locations. It's not that big of a deal. I love them and they're pretty substantial in their weight. So pretty good quality too. But something I did see ahead of time and I purchased from at home this time around, the one thing I got there, um, is gonna be these little bat ornaments. They're hollow inside, they're pretty lightweight. The set for 12, there's six each for each of the colors, is $6.99, so it's not the, you know, most expensive thing in the world, but I've been looking for something like this for a very long time. I think I went to like maybe three TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Marshall stores, and some of them had more things than others. But one big pattern I've noticed is that whole pastel Halloween. I think that is just the color, the vibe of the season at all these stores. Maybe they all like met at some like secret clandestine Halloween decor meeting, um, maybe this past fall and we're like, you know, what's the color for the season and everybody's like on board. I'd love to know the behind the scenes on how they choose what they put out. If there's like some trend forecaster, I'm intrigued. There's tons of Halloween that is pastel at so many of the places I've gone to. It's not personally my vibe, it's fun to look at. I just don't feel like that'll match any section in my home that I decorate for the fall season, but probably something around spring or Valentine's. Some things might be, you know, useful to kind of put here and there, like some of those pumpkins that Michaels has. When I went to at home for the first time before my Tahoe trip, I did take a little peek into Michaels, which is pretty close by the at home. And I was really happy to see that there was a code orange. I saw tons of that pastel hippie hollow line and the more traditional line too. But I'm really excited for their third line that has more of like the busts and things that are more dark academia. There is a bust of Dracula or I think it's like a tombstone or something. I saw it online and I'm like keeping my eyes peeled for that one. It's a need for sure. And I know it's pretty controversial, that whole like hippie, hollow, pastel, bright Halloween line. My main critique though with all of Michael's decor is the quality is so bad. And I don't think people talk about this enough or at least not the stuff that I'm consuming. Things are just guaranteed to be banged up, to be you know broken or like paint in weird places, the things are expensive there, like they're not cheap. And yes, they do have some sales every so often, but a lot of the stuff just looks so bad where I'm like, I'm not gonna pay full price or maybe even the sale price for something that looks ruined. Let me know if that's just my stores or do you also notice that at your local Michaels too? It might just be my area, who knows? Okay, so the four things I picked up at Home Goods, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, like they're literally all the same thing to me, um, I'm really excited about. So I have this really cool spider candle holder. They are gold, they are creepy, and they bring me so much joy. I have a few candlesticks that I really hope fit. It's pretty narrow, so we'll see, but sometimes I can just like shove them in there. They separate, they come off, you can put them in different kind of locations. But if you know me and you've like kind of watched any of my recent content, you know, I'm really into spiders. And these would be also really cool as decor for the springtime because it's like, you know, insects, bugs, that kind of thing, kind of um, dark cottage core. I think of bugs and one of my favorite is the spider. So this is useful for fall and spring. So love that. Um, I also picked up one of these like kind of fake books. I don't even know what you would 
call these. They're like decorative books that open up. And I love how people store stuff in here, like cords or remotes, any kind of item you might need that just isn't serving an aesthetic purpose. You can kind of just close them up in these books and people use larger ones than these. But this one I thought would be great to kind of prop up and create dimension in any kind of corner or section that kind of needs something like that because that's kind of, um, I think you accumulate over time stuff that kind of adds more coziness and having some more visual interest. Those are things you just kind of have to pick up here and there. Little things like this are great for stacking, you know, having flat like this, putting something on top of it, or like more books. I love that it is vintage Halloween, which is really cute. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this and get really creative. Um, and then I got these kitchen towels, which I don't know why I love kitchen towels so much, probably because they're just such an easy way to spice up a kitchen. And I'm not really big on decorating my kitchen, but just it's just so simple, right? And I love bats. It's probably obvious at this point. I love bats and they also kind of fall into that gothic aesthetic that I'm really into. And these are just such good quality. You have a black one and then two of the patterned designed bat ones, kind of like a little fishnet situation. I love how simple they are and just kind of a whimsical, cute, creepy goth kind of vibe to them. Had to have these and they were only eight bucks, which proves that this is a better deal in quality and quantity than the ones I got from Joann's, but I love those, so I just sucked it up. And then last, but definitely not least, you know me, I'm a hobby gal through and through. So at um, my last stop, I think it was, or the second middle store I went to, I got this little Scooby-Doo puzzle for $7.99 and it's a thousand pieces. I'm currently in the middle of my Frankenstein puzzle of a thousand pieces. I feel like I could handle this one because I'm doing pretty good right now with my Frankenstein one. I grew up watching Cartoon Network as one of my favorite channels. Scooby-Doo just brings back so much childhood nostalgia for me. And it's also really cool that my nephew, he's about seven, he's gonna be seven soon. He really loves Scooby-Doo as well. So it's kind of just like this really fun thing and it just makes me feel so happy when I think about Scooby-Doo. So having a puzzle for me to bust out this fall, I'm excited to have this around. I've really loved that this season, I've just kind of been picking up things here and there that I've been planning on purchasing and really being particular about the stuff that I bring home, knowing that it fits a certain aesthetic or it will help me like, for example, um, you know, have more time for my hobbies and you know, pieces like this that aren't the center focus of a space, but kind of add dimension, warmth, and coziness, which, you know, as I consume a lot of like decor videos on YouTube or Instagram, it's a lot of intricate little pieces that kind of make a space feel homey and welcoming. And that takes time and that takes money. So it's kind of an accumulation over the course of many years, which to me personally, decorating is a hobby in and of itself. It takes so much time, so much skill and expertise um, to find the items, to put them all together, to pack them up, clean them. like. It's for sure a hobby in my book. So I think it's been what, like four days of Summerween, three more to go. I found a book I really loved and I found some pieces that just make me so excited. I started a puzzle. I'm getting into puzzling as a new hobby to add to my hobby rotation. So, so far Summerween is making me feel very excited for the beginning of spooky season. And I just hope I can keep that feeling alive, that like coziness with the books and movies I'm watching I do plan on reading more books that fit the prompts because I have not finished that just yet, but I have three more days. I wanted to watch um, the Blur Witch Project for the very first time. I've never seen it. I know. I know. Don't, don't cancel me. Um, but I, I think I'm going to get to it because of the whole like spooky forest vibe really fits the theme of Summerween this year. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Let me know down below in the comments what you've been reading recently. What are some pieces maybe you've picked up if you've been on that Halloween decor hunt? You know, what hobbies are you getting up to spooky or not? I can't wait to chat with you all down below. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.